We all know the Pandora box, but do you know the Pandora treasure? It's an Xbox Series S in black, or is it a PlayStation? Who knows? Let's check it out. So yes, here we are with the Pandora Treasure, the console version of the famous arcade sticks. As you can see on the top of the box, it says, have a good time together. So it's all about the family fun. Whoa, even granddad and nana are playing it. Cool. On the back of the box, we've got an outlook of the system. And this is what makes me think it's the same interface that's inside those Pandora joystick machines. We've got a DC jack, HDMI out, the VGA out, got a headphone jack, volume adjust there, and setup, setting up the system. Oh, well, that's a weird one, isn't it? Well, we'll have to check it out and see what that's all about. And the switch. <laughs> well, yeah. But I'm confused because on the top it says Pandora Treasure, and on here it says Mini Street Arcade. Ooh. And on this side, no idea what that says, but it is English. Well, that's one of the kanjis used for English in Japanese. No idea about Chinese though. All right, so let's take a look in the box and see what we get. I've got to say it's not exactly the most luxurious of boxes, is it? But that's all beaten up and everything. All right, let's take a look inside here. Okay. So first off, we have some styrofoam and, oh, don't tell me that's the console. It is, that's the console. It's tiny. All right, and we have wireless joysticks, wireless controllers, I should say, which feel very light and flimsy. Got on off button there. Oh, bloody hell, look at that. Can you see that? It's not even put together properly. Oof. That is... Yeah, hopefully these are just uh, standard Bluetooth or better still, uh, 2.4 gigahertz controllers. We'll uh, check it out, but uh, yeah, they're very flimsy. Yeah, not nice at all. Okay, so you get two of those. There's the other one. Power pack, European style. You need to use an adapter to use that in Japan. Luckily it is 110 volts input and we have an HDMI cable and what's this? Ah, Bluetooth transmitter dongle. All right, so they are just standard Bluetooth controllers and that's your lot. All right, so let's get the camera a little bit closer and open up this box. Now I've got to say, I am surprised. I didn't think it was gonna be that small. But uh, yeah, it's got a little bit of weight to it. So uh, let's open this up. It might be a quite a nice looking device. Ah, micro SD card pre-installed. And thankfully it's got a USB port on the side there. So maybe we can use USB controllers. I mean, nothing else in there. We got some uh, instructions on the top, uh, Chinese. Ah, Chinese only by the looks of it. But at least the instructions are in color. Ah, there we go, we have English as well. So that's good. All right, interesting. So we can see the specs there. What I'll do is I'll put them on the screen over here so you can see it a little bit clearer. All right, so. Let's take a look at the actual device itself. There it is. Yeah, it's made it up. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not premium plastic. That's, uh, yeah, it does feel a bit cheap and look a bit cheap actually, but you know, maybe it performs well. That's where the exhaust comes out for the fan. You can see the fan underneath there. And yeah, we've got uh, two USB ports on here. So hopefully standard USB sticks will work and the power button, which was already switched on. Hmm. Okay, no battery inside. Let's see what size micro SD card have they given us. All right, well, we've got a ScanDisk Ultra. Don't know if that's gonna be a legit one, but it's 32 gigabytes. So uh, 
quite a lot of uh, games on there. So let's get this thing connected up to the TV and see what it's like. Okay, upon switching on the machine for the first time, you get the Pandora Treasure splash screen, as you can see there. And then straight into the list. And yes, this is a typical Pandora's box, but set up as a console. And this particular one comes with, let's see, how many games? Ah, oh, 4,000. 230 games and as you can see they're not all arcade games because these are PlayStation games Ask a 120% Limited Burning Fist. That's going to be the PlayStation version up there actually up there. Yeah So uh, we'll check that out and it's nice to see we get the little video previews over there in the corner So uh, let's uh, go to Asuka. There you go. You got the little video preview as well Now probably what you want to know is can you use any USB controller on it? Well, it seems you can. I've got a PlayStation 4 Horde controller here and yeah, it works. And here we got a Sega Saturn USB controller. So let's connect this up to a player 2's input and see what happens. And let's press the setup button on the back of the console. Okay, so straight away you get various options. So let's go to USB gamepad mapping. Okay, so we're going to press a button on the Sega controller and the uh, Hori. So there's the Hori, and as you can see in the top corner up there, it actually says name, Hori Company Limited, Hori Pad 4. And here, you can just set up your buttons, very simple to do. You just basically press the buttons in the order in which you want them to appear in the game. That's it, that's all you have to do. I'm going to see if we can do the same with the Sega. All right, so the Sega is, ah, uh, here we go. You can see it's now changed to Cypress USB pad <laughs> up there in the corner. Not sure why the Sega controller is called that, but uh, let's give it a try. So we're gonna go, uh, I presume these are gonna be the uh, punches and a six button game start. And we'll have this as the coin. So let's see if we can uh, exit all that. Or do we have to do this one as well? All right, let's see if we can... Okay, we can't seem to exit, so... Ah, we can exit with the Hori pad. Okay, let's save that. Yes, save please. Okay. Game listing, Neo Geo console on or off. That basically just plays the Neo Geo games. We'll keep that off so we get all the different games. Different wallpapers for the background. So we've got this purpley looking thing here. We'll change that to number five, whatever that is. Languages, we've got Korean. Uh, Chinese and English and that's about it so let's uh, save all that of course we've got the iOS test the uh, IO test as well so as you can see all the buttons are working here let's try the Sega pad absolutely not so obviously oh there you go the d-pad's working but the buttons are not well that's not a surprise is it I think I uh, didn't set up player two's controls <laughs> anyway we'll just go with uh, the Hori pad and uh, let's start off with the PlayStation game, Asuka 120% Limited Burning Fist. And uh, let's see how well it handles that. Like, hopefully it'll work pretty well. So let's switch off the lights so we get a nice good view of the screen without my reflection. Now you'll notice straight away a problem. It's in 16x9 and we don't like our retro games in 16x9. Luckily, my TV can... Uh, change the aspect ratio. So we'll put it into 4x3. I'm happy to say that the sound is in really good quality and it is stereo. Unfortunately you can't tell that because I'm using a lavalier mic and that's in mono. <laughs> now what we want to look for is any drop frames. Is it going to run this perfectly? 60 frames per second. Now, I prefer this on the Sega Saturn, it looks better. But uh, it's still pretty nice on the PlayStation. Yeah, that's working flawlessly, 60 frames per second. No problem. Now, the video image is a little bit soft. It's clean, there's no video noise, but it is a little bit soft. And input lag, well, 
I'm certainly not noticing any. I'm sure it's there, but it doesn't seem to be uh, making any difference to my inputs. All right, so we've got a search function up here. Let's check that out. Uh, let's see if we've got, uh, we want turtles in time. Timely turtles. Turtles take Manhattan. It's a Mega Drive game, isn't it? I think we've got Mega Drive games on here. Um, all right, we'll go with this one. See how quickly this loads up. Hmm, not too bad. Again, you can see there, I hope you can see this on the video, but that image is a little bit on the soft side. It's not exactly super pin sharp. All right, this is the original Turtles arcade game. Okay, let's try out that save state. So we'll save uh, the state there. All right, let's uh, move along a little bit. Okay, and uh, let's load up that save. Yep, works perfectly, no problem. All right, I wanna see if we've got uh, different uh, turtles on here. I wanna see if it's got turtles in time. Nope, this looks like it's a console game. Looks like it's a Super Nintendo. And look how, ooh, look how blurry that is. Yeah, this is a Super Nintendo game. With a horrible filter over it. Ooh, that does not look nice. Yuck. So what I'm looking for is screen tearing as it scrolls and there doesn't seem to be any. So that's nice. So it's not all doom and gloom I guess. But yeah that filter does not look nice. Okay let's take a look at some arcade games, see how they run on this device. Okay, let's go with a little bit of Neo Geo action first. We'll go with one of the more crazy games on the system. Okay, so screen tearing doesn't seem to be an issue that uh, writing is scrolling across the screen is smooth enough. No screen tearing at all there, so that's a good thing. I haven't played this in such a long time. I don't think I can remember any of the moves. But we'll give it a try anyway. Nope. <laughs> now one good thing I must say about this machine is that the games are full screen. I mean, that is touching the very top and bottom of my TV. So it's not like they're playing in a little box or anything like that. Just to give you an idea, let me switch on the lights so you can see. So there's the bottom of the TV and there's the top. It's actually cutting off a little bit. It looks like it is working at the correct speed. It is? Wow, we can play Altered Beast at the correct speed now. What a future we live in. <laughs> so, if Mortal Kombat's on this, I wonder if it will play that full speed. We should check it out and see. Alright, let's take a look. Alright, a little bit of screen tear in there as it scrolled down. But, yeah, the screen tearing, you can see it. But, not bad, not bad. I expected worse. It's definitely playable. 
if you can say Mortal Kombat playable. Oh, I'm going to upset some people there. Come here, you. Oh, I'm useless at this game. Oh, probably perfectly. It's the Mega Drive version. <laughs> All right, well, let's give a Mega Drive game a test and see if it works fine or not. It's got a horrible blurry filter on it. But yeah, it seems to be working. Nice and smooth there with the tilting. So uh, yep, definitely running at the right frame rate. And the sound is as it should be. Okay, let's uh, take a look at more arcade stuff because to be honest, arcade stuff is uh, where this machine would be most impressive. Here's an oddity, an arcade game that's in widescreen. So let's put this into normal full mode. This actually should be in 16 by 9. So it's good to see we can actually play this like it should be in the arcade. It still looks a bit stretched though. I think it was originally across three arcade monitors. So uh, maybe we, can, we need to squash it down a little bit more with the settings on the TV. But uh, we're not gonna go into that now. Okay, we're taking a look at a lot of different arcade games here, but let's take a look at some shooters and see how they work. Good luck. Whoa, <laughs> I think that is not exactly how it's meant to look, is it? <laughs> yeah, the emulation's yeah, the emulation's not too Thank good you. there, is it? <laughs> At least it's smooth. All right, let's check out uh, some other shooters. So we'll go with a bit of a classic first. This is Cotton. Should run this without any issues, I think. Yep, not a problem, nice and smooth. Okay, we'll go with a classic. This is Dodon Pachi. Everyone likes a bit of Dodon Pachi. And I'm happy to say it's in the correct aspect ratio. It's not super stretched. But it does have a bit of screen tearing. Look at that. You can see it. Well, that is a shame. Whoa. 
That's got some pretty bad screen tearing. Oh, that is, ooh, that is pretty bad. Okay, let's check out one more vertical scroll and shooter and see if that suffers the same as this. Okay, so we've tried to go with a game that's not by Cave, this is by Raising, and this is one of their classics. Alright. Hopefully this will be nice and smooth. And it seems to be. Okay, so it looks like... I mean, it's the correct aspect ratio as well. It looks like um, it's using different emulators for different shoot 'em ups because uh, the Odon Pachi is no more demanding than this game. And this one's running perfectly fine. Okay, we're going to end with a classic. This is Night Slashers. Now, Night Slashers never works properly, so I'll be interested to see how well the emulation is. I'm not expecting a miracle. Yeah, as you can see, the wall was semi transparent there, but uh, it's always like that. But I'm happy to say the speed is correct. Awesome music in this game as well. So there we have it, that is the Pandora Treasure, a nice little tiny arcade system. Now it's not perfect, you saw that, some games work really well, some games don't. Um, but the PlayStation stuff runs very nicely on it and a lot of the arcade stuff does and Super Nintendo Mega Drive does as well. But the thing is, depending on the internal resolution of the game will depend on how blurry it is on the screen. You saw, uh, like this game here doesn't look blurry at all. But you saw the uh, Super Nintendo stuff and some of the Neo Geo stuff and the Mega Drive uh, Afterburner, they run at a lower resolution and they look really nasty, I mean really blurred. I mean some people like that type of uh, blurriness but it's not for me, I like it to be a lot sharper, you know, pixel perfect. But um, it, some of the arcade stuff, depending on what it is, can look uh, good as you saw when we went through all those arcade games. So yeah, it's an okay device but you gotta ask yourself are you happy with the blurry image that some games have now the controllers that come with it these are uh, Bluetooth controllers they're complete and utter crap I mean I tried them off camera the d-pad is horrible these things that just way too sensitive you go to the menu and you know it's skipping through all the options and you're not even pressing it so the drifting already but yeah these are awful but I did test it with the 8-bit Do um, Bluetooth uh, controller and that worked just fine. And I tried it with a couple of different uh, USB controllers. Um, this one here, the Astro City controller, that didn't work. But that's no surprise because it doesn't work on a lot of things. But it does work on a PC just fine. Um, I tried PlayStation 4 controllers, they worked. The uh, Sega Saturn controller here, the Sega Saturn USB controller. This kind of worked but for some reason the start button wouldn't function so that's a bit weird but again that is another one that uh, is a little bit picky but works fine on a pc i tried my usb joystick that worked i tried the 360 controller that worked i tried the wired uh, xbox uh, one controller that worked as well so there's a lot of uh, options for controllers so you don't have to use the junk that come with it anyway if you're interested in picking up one of these devices i'll put a link in the video description down below Loads of games, loads of arcade games. You've got your fighters, your shooters, your obscure Korean puzzle games like this thing here, which is just an Arkanoid ripoff. Um, but yeah, it's got all the game types on here. So um, 
yeah, if you have this something, check out the link in the video description down below. Till next time guys, take it easy and keep on gaming. See ya.